Good morning everyone and welcome to the bright and beautiful Benskloof. It's a nice mountain pass running through the Bavianskloof Mountains in the Western Cape. Today we're looking for the King Sunday Drosseridia, the big one. They aim to survey every known population. So let's go find some big monster plants. So here I'm sitting again with the King Sundew. This is the sort of lower main spot that people have been to. I'm a bit late as they are now mostly busy developing seeds. You can see a few stems, they're very big, quite forked. Down here we have the magnificent plants. A little small this year, I think the summer's been quite dry. If I'd hazard to guess, the leaves are at most 30 centimeters long. The stems are quite tall to stick them out of the surrounding grasses and see a few dotted around. As for the actual soil, it's very hard to get to, but there is water down underneath. So they do stay wet even here in summer in March when it's very hot. Um, and I think they're going to go dormant relatively soon after seed set. You can see the pods are looking quite good. So here, you can see I have some Drosseregia seeds. I'm not going to keep these, obviously. They're very, very large as far as sundew seeds go. I suspect it limits their dispersal abilities. And here you can see where they came from. These things are enormous. They're really jutting out nicely here on the slope. At the bottom, you can see some Drosseria admirabilis. The floating sinew is originally called Drosera species floating, so it often sat submerged. You can see another stem, very good seeds in them, very good seed set. Still don't know what pollinates them, my money's on a bee. And hopefully, I can find some flowers later, but I'm not too confident. So, look at the length of the leaves. So you can see these ones are just shy a touch over 30. I had a 39, 38, and you can see. This one here actually called around a moth. Drosseridia is known to be a pretty mobile species, and the stems are also quite long. See, so kind of against an arm, it's almost at my elbow. It will focus, but I've measured them at 40 to 45 centimeters long. It's pretty long for a flower stem on a sundew. I mean, Drosseria capensis rarely gets sort of about 30 to 35 centimeter stems. That's long. See, so yeah, this particular patch is very dense. There's a lot, my brother's counting up above. We've seen probably an estimated 200 plants of population, which is quite great. As we saw, there is seed set, numerous flower stems. So it's quite a relief to see. You can actually see how fat these pods are. Absolutely brimming with seed. So here we have one of the greatest beauties of the Cape Floristic region, the Dicey Uniflora. This is a lovely, nice red one. The ones in Benskwick are pretty round petals, pretty round hood up here, pollinated by butterfly, the Table Mountain butterfly. You can see the pollinia in there, in the butterfly lands, they attach themselves, get carried off. There's also Drosser defenses in the shadow. A lot of seeds, you can see these inflorescences are massive. In each of these pods contains quite a lot of seeds. This pond has made thousands. You can see them all over my fingers already. They likely get washed downstream. We'll go down, down, down to the valley below. So we find ourselves now at our second region spot for the day. This is quite a nice population. Quite a lot of them growing again alongside Drosera at Marabolus, the floating sundew. These regia are a little shorter. They're growing quite a bit higher up. They're above 1300 meters in elevation. But also some fantastic seed set. Lots of flowers. I'm too late for the flowering, unfortunately. See the grounds got quite a bit of a crust, a kind of bio crust. Again here, we have a moth that's been caught. And if we go 
just a little over here parcel bags you can see it's again very crunchy and quite dry but we saw some grosserito growing Ooh, growing in it it's quite sandy hard soil Not likely very inorganic but now that's the sort of height end of summer it's very dry over here most of them are growing near to the water and yeah the sort of better view of the habitat it's running between rocks and just over there is a moist part let's do a count and see how many sundews are here it's all difficult to see in here here's a moth caught in Drosser Ridge's iconic super sort of twisty motion or capture so a lot of sundews will bend around their prey but Ridge takes it a step further and just bends around it like crazy so it seems moths are a very big part of the prey here don't see many other sundews catching moths mostly smaller flies it's quite interesting so we have a little bit of evidence of herbivory here a little patch of these regions has then leaves nibble down to stumps i'm guessing about clips putting it it's a small antelope it's relatively common in the mountains and the whole patch of them really has been nibbled i see it a lot with flower stems or other sundews such as drosera sister flora because in this world a very hard unpalatable fain boss some delicious soft sundew flower stems are always pretty easy pickings so at long last, I've acquainted myself with the magnificent flower of Drosera Regia. These plants are sitting in this kind of crust. Seems relatively dry at the surface, it might be a little bit moist underneath. But I think it really is getting a bit toasty for them now. So these flowers are massive in relation to other sunny flowers you can see here in my hand. And they're also interesting that they're mounted laterally. My sunny flowers mounted upright like that, the lens cap. They've also got a bit more zygomorphy to them in that they're bilaterally symmetrical down the middle. Most sundies are radial around. They're big, they're pink. I suspect they're pollinated by bees given their pretty long bits mounted laterally. Um, pollination biology in the cape is pretty interesting as a whole. And they are definitely getting pollinated by something. Most of the pods we find have seed. And this population is about 250 to 300 plants. But didn't make as many flower stems as the one lower down, maybe because it gets a bit drier or higher elevation has something to do with it. And I'm happy to see so many of them. Okay, so on the way to the hellish pine forest that gets us to 30 regions, but we actually found some more hidden here in the shade. Super etiolated. Oh, uh, we're in a lot of fame boss. There's my wonderful brother, Sad over in. But there are a lot of pines here. These are probably the biggest threat to Drosera Regia. You can see them sticking out here between all the other trees, the famous trees. There's very dense stands of them. This is obviously quite shaded. I think a fire will do this place some good in a few years. And they should be fully exposed to the sun again. So here, also the region in a fairly unexpected place. Found a stream from water. It's a very hot day. Incredibly refreshing. And here in this underhang, I can go through here. Yeah. And next to me are some more regular looking regions. The ones under by the water are very, very etiolated, so very straggly looking. Not as big as the last ones two under the pine. There's also some particular area that green ball at the end. So any place I've seen it so far that's still alive. In a lot of places in the cave that operates as a facultative annual. So it grows and it flowers and it sets seed, but often it grows in moss banks and such where it gets completely dry in summer. It's like stone dead. It also kind of grows with it, but it has a rooster dormancy. Whereas you trickle layer out and it just sets seed and hangs out till the next wet season. So here I find probably the most breathtaking thing I've ever seen at the cave. Just absolute masses of Drosera Regia. It's incredibly hard to step here without the risk of trampling one. They are massive. They are numerous. Some of them are even showing a nice little bit of red. They flowered, the setting seed. This makes my heart very happy. Based on the trudging around, there's at least a thousand of them here, if not more. Some of those leaves are enormous. I'm guessing 40 centimeters, it could be longer. 
I have lost four words. And they cover an enormous area. It's probably over 100 square meters. Much bigger than other populations. Wow, 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 wow. So I am back at probably one of my favorite Regis spots at Tori Sidley. The big wet wall. Last time I was here it was October 2022. They were pretty small at the time, having just emerged from dormancy. But now they are matte. Beautiful, lovely sun views. You can see over here a nice, nice unfurling leaf. They have a pretty big good roll going on. But they're really going crazy. You can actually see the sort of mass of root and old material hanging down there. They're growing almost, it looks like, from nothing anchored on the rock. I'll find some nice ones in the sun. So here are some real behemoths standing pretty in the sun. They glow like no other sun you have ever seen. I mean, there's a 20 centimeter hand for scale. They are properly enormous. Down by my brother's feet here, there are a lot more. Before I slip, let me come down and show you. So there are some more standing at the bottom of this wet wall, catching whatever water runs off. And up there, blowing up my camera, is probably the largest individual one I've seen today. Maybe just because it's standing on its own. But the others over here are huge. If I turn around, you get a good look at the wet wall. It's very seepy. If I come around the other side, the sun, you can get a bit more of a look at it. There's a few hundred plants here. I'd say it's one of the healthiest populations I've seen. Just in terms of how good they look, how open they are. There's not really any risk of invasive trees choking them out here. There is the risk that the trees soak up the water source though, which will make the seep run dry. So here we find probably one of the greatest plagues for the Jossa region. This is the Hakia. It's an invasive tree from Australia. Also the Proteaceae, ironically, the family the Cape Fauna is, and Flora is famous for. It's very spiky, very annoying. Release its seeds after a fire, which makes it a pain to deal with. The other one here is pines. There are a lot of these. I hate them with a burning passion because I just had to climb through massive groves of them. They pop up everywhere here. They have a very short generation time. Luckily, both of these trees die after being hacked down, unlike poor Jacksons and other Akashas slash Wattles. But getting up here in these remote areas is difficult, it's expensive. You have to get rid of all the seeds. There have been hacking efforts at the lower population, which have been successful in protecting the plants. But higher up, a lot of work still needs to be done. Ready? So this is the fun part of hiking in the fade once your boots get absolutely full of nonsense. That's from like 30 minutes of walking. Nice little swim. It's always appreciated after bashing through Fade Boss for the past six hours. We got two more Regis spots left to go to. And about three hours of sunlight left. Let's see what we get to first. So, with much luck, I have found my fourth Regis spot for the day. These are of old coordinates I got from about 2016. And just look at them in the afternoon sun. They're looking absolutely vibrant. There are some more over here, glistening nicely. So far, this is a pretty small population. What is our population count at, Mr. Counter? Uh, 43. 43 so far. So not that many compared to some of the other spots where they're between hundreds and thousands. But pretty good to find some more. This is relatively far from the others in every way. So it's good to have spot number four. Hopefully we find number five before it gets dark. So as it turns out, the last region spot is a little too far away. The day has ran away with us. But we found so many amazing populations, at least over 2,000 plants in one day for Drosto Regia is absolutely mind-blowing to me. The last ones can wait. It's apparently a very tiny population to watch down from the valley above. So not the end of the world, not to have seen it, but to have to see everything else to find two new populations slash subpopulations Another spot I haven't visited before. It's a day dreams are made of. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.